On the show tonight, we have United States Senator Doug Jones from the great state of Alabama. Senator Jones is currently the only statewide elected uh, Democrat in Alabama. He's considered uh, one of the more bipartisan senators, having broken with party on uh, several issues and even co-sponsoring several different pieces of legislation with Republicans. Uh, please welcome to the weekly show, Senator Doug Jones. David, it's great to be with you. It's good to see you again. Uh, Senator, most of our local viewers already know who you are, but some might like to know more about you personally. Um, where did you grow up? What was life like there? And, and what do you remember most about growing up? You know, I remember a great childhood. I, I was born and raised here in Alabama. I've lived here all my life, except for one year when I worked for the late Senator Howell Heflin in Washington, D.C., and then moved back here to be an assistant U.S. attorney. But I you know, educated in the public schools of Alabama, went to the University of Alabama, and then to Cumberland Law School right at Samford University in Birmingham. You know, I grew up in Fairfield, Alabama, which is in the shadow of U.S. Steel. All of my family, just about all the men in my family, worked at U.S. Steel in one form or another. Some in the tin mill and different places with labor. Dad moved up after a little bit, was in management. He stayed there for almost 60 years working for U.S. Steel and another company. So I've been here all my life. It seems these days that that something has happened to bipartisanship. There used to be, I mean, there used to be obviously a lot more of it. Now it seems as if we have kind of some far extremes, yes. you know, um, where people are either far right or far left. You see it on social media all the time. Um, how difficult is it now when you feel like there's something that you feel is really important to the state of Alabama and that your constituents, whether they be Democrat or Republican, you know, how important is it to you as far as the bipartisanship aspect of it? I mean, is it difficult for you to, 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 to break against party in these current political times in order for you to do the things that you know that, that your people in Alabama want, really want? Yeah, you know, no, it's not at all. I, I've, I've done that on, a, on any number of occasions, and it's not difficult at all, in part because it is not just, as you say, because the people of Alabama numerically might want it. I mean, I don't do polls necessarily to do that, but it's just who I am. And if the party is doing something that I don't like or I don't agree with, it is against my nature, both politically or professionally or however it is, it's just not what I think is in the best interest of the state or the country, I don't have any problem breaking with the party. I've done it on any number of issues, um, and, and it just kind of goes. That's what I promised to do when I got elected, to just kind of be the person that would do what I believe to be the right thing, and not everybody's going to agree with it. I want to chat with you about your work prosecuting the 16th Street bombers. Um, yeah. Why was that case so important to you, and how were you able to successfully prosecute those who were responsible so much later, so many years down the road? Well, it was a difficult process, uh, I will tell you. It, it was important to me because I had a history with the McNair family whose daughter, Denise, lost uh, was lost in that bombing. I'd been friends with the McNair family for many, many years. But also, a lot of folks don't remember this, but I went to Cumberland Law School here in Birmingham at a time when then Attorney General Bill Baxley prosecuted the first church bomber, a guy named Chambliss. And I cut classes to go watch the trial. And I saw the reaction of the community. So this was really about the state, the community, it, and the victims. It was, you know, the criminal justice system, you know, pays a lot of heed to victims and how th they deserve that justice. And so that case had been reopened for a few months prior to me becoming United States attorney. When I found out about it, we just took the bull by the horns and ran with it. Putting the pieces of the puzzle together was the challenge. Witnesses had died. Witnesses were old and didn't remember. We found one tape recording. We found an ex-girlfriend. And then Bobby Frank Cherry had made a number of admissions over the years, and we got those people back. It was an amazing experience working with all of those people and to see the reaction of this state and this country when we got those two convictions after so many years. Uh, before we move into some of the more nitty-gritty uh, questions, which we'll get into after the break, I wanted to ask you why you got back into politics after being in private practice for so long. I mean, if you can, take us back to 2017. What made you decide to take that leap of faith and run as a Democrat in what is now a red state, Alabama? I mean, there used to be Southern Democrats, but that's kind of changed. Uh, well, 
you, you know, David, it, it was really a decision that had been coming in for a long time. I've been, I, I've been very disappointed that the Democratic Party in Alabama had not been fielding um, uh, candidates up and down the ballot. We've had some good candidates out there, but the party infrastructure as a whole had just let people down. And there were a lot of voices out there. People say, yeah, this is a red state, but we got to remember, you know, that 40 percent or more of this state votes Democratic in almost every election, at least 40 percent. You change those numbers just a little bit, and all of a sudden, the state's purple. You change it 10 points or 11 points, then the state's blue. I don't see things that way. I believe that people need to have a voice, and I felt like with my background as the U.S. attorney, not only who prosecuted the church bombing cases— but also led to the indictment of Eric Rudolph, who was the terrorist who bombed the, the women's clinic in Birmingham and the Olympics in 1996. I felt like I had a platform to give some people the voice that they haven't felt like they've had a voice before. And I've been telling people for a long time, you know, it's not always about winning or losing. It's about running and setting the stage, building that platform for others so that we can have a competitive two-party system in this state. Well, we're going to go to break, and then when we come back, uh, I'm going to—I I want to ask you about maybe eight to ten questions that I'm that I'm going to ask you, and then I'd also ask uh, uh, Coach Tommy Tuberville if he comes on the show. So we'll be right back after these uh, messages with Senator Doug Jones. <laughs> 